Okay, uh, good Mittag. Um, ich bin uh, Peter Martin aus den Niederlanden und ich wolle etwas erzählen über ChatGPT uh, für Website-Developers. And it was a joke because I will do the presentation in English. <laughs> okay, but it, it will be about ChatGPT for Website-Developers and also a, a bit of AI. So, my presentation will be, uh, the sheet will be online at petermartin.nl. And uh, all the links in this presentation are blue and you can click them to go to the right sources. So, uh, 15 minutes ago, um, I wanted to make a presentation about ChatGPT. So I asked ChatGPT, please create a presentation on how ChatGPT and AI will change website building. So, uh, sure, now, this is the presentation. Uh, not. Um, I used, used the word please. And why did I use the word please? Because when I talk English, I use the word please a lot. English do that. And also because I saw this clip somewhere. Hey Google, play us some music please. Why are you so polite? Ah, just in case, if the robots win. Um, actually, now I don't use please anymore, but I will tell you later. So in this presentation, I will talk about what is ChatGPT, how to use it using the web interface, how to use it using an API, and also some use cases. And I will end with a demo of a commercial extension that I use. I didn't make it myself, but it's really marvelous. So what is ChatGPT? Who has not used ChatGPT so far? Okay, so I will show it anyway. Um, so this is ChatGPT. If you go to uh, to their website and uh, you have to register with um, your email address and also your telephone number, so they know everything about you, and you can just start a message like, "Oh no, not please." Could have started with this. Anyway, <laughs> stop. Yeah, 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 stop. <laughs> so this is ChatGPT. Um, I mean, this is how it works, but I will tell now more about. Oh, yeah. To the doki of okay. So what is ChatGPT? Well, it's a, it's a chatbot. And we had a lot of chatbots in the past, like Elisa. Uh, Elisa was a nice chatbot, uh, but it only responded to the last um, question that you did. And um, ChatGPT is a chatbot that uses a prompt, and you communicate with an AI language model. I will explain later what it is. The language model understands how language works and in a complex way, it recognizes a lot of topics and it improves over time, it's still learning. And it uses machine learning to, to get more knowledge. So, what is a prompt? Well, I just did a prompt on a, in a website of ChatGPT. Um, if you ask, could you explain Joomla CMS, it's not a prompt. It's a question, a request, and they will say yes or no. Do you want coffee or tea? Yes, please. Um, if you say explain Joomla CMS, it's also not a prompt, because this is a command. A prompt would be, act like a Joomla specialist and explain Joomla CMS to a small business owner. So, I, I, I will expand this later. So, a good prompt uh, is specific. It will have a desired outcome, so you define what you want. It should have some context. Uh, it uses personas. And it could also have a style, so you can say do it in an official way, like uh, in, in German uh, use the uh, C instead of do, this kind of stuff. And what I did, one of the first questions I asked when I started with ChatGPT is explain the difference between Joomla and WordPress. And this is to what I got. Joomla and WordPress are both CMS systems. And uh, they say a lot of things about, for instance, security, 
Both platforms have been subject to security vulnerabilities in the past. And uh, David has uh, had a nice presentation today about security, so uh, go watch it if, if you were, weren't there. But anyway, uh, they say that WordPress is considered to be more secure because it has uh, more frequent releases. So, yeah, I don't agree. And uh, yeah, also more stuff like uh, WordPress is designed to be more suitable for smaller websites, etc. Anyway, this is what ChatGPT answered on this question. Explain the difference between Joomla and WordPress. So you have to be careful with ChatGPT. It's like garbage in, garbage out. Uh, ChatGPT can be wrong, so uh, you can generate stuff that's not true. Like one time I said some, I asked something about, uh, please tell me something about DB8, which is my company. And according to ChatGPT, I was located in Amsterdam, which is not true, I'm in Nijmegen. Um, it's still learning, and you have to be careful not to put personal data in ChatGPT. You don't know what happens with it. Maybe they will use it in some way. And you should not use it blindly. So it's just like a car navigation, when it says turn right and you have a canal uh, with water next to you, you should not do that. So it's a tool. Um, so the question, what I did just ago, I will do it again. And then I say, explain why you should use Joomla and not WordPress for your website. And now, everything is very positive about Joomla. Well, at this, Joomla is positive, so I agree with this. Anyway, uh, Joomla is really uh, strong security, has a robust framework, etc. So um, it depends how you ask your questions, what you get out of it. It's just like Google. If you Google just one word, two words, it's better to use more context, more words. And it's the same with uh, ChatGPT. So uh, ChatGPT is developed by a company called OpenAI. And Microsoft has a really large part in it now. Um, they use a language model called GPT-3. And also three GPT-4, but a G uh, version 3 is what I just showed you. And it has been trained with data until uh, 2021. So it doesn't know anything from yesterday or last year. They used really large computers um, with a lot of uh, power, which is really expensive. Uh, the GPU means uh, ge um, graphic processing uh, unit, I think. It's uh, what gamers use in, in their computers or what uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, generators use. Um, this is really expensive. And they launched it last year. So um, what is a language model? A language model is some sort of uh, old, uh, algorithm, artificial intelligence, and it predicts, uh, it predicts the probabil probabil probability of words. So maybe... Um, I would like to tell you something avocado. Who here in the room would have expected that I would say avocado? No one. Yeah, that's great. Uh, you probably had in your mind about, the word about, because I wanted to tell something about. So uh, we also have a language model inside. We predict the words. You, if somebody tells something, you already know what they're going to say a lot of times. It's the same with language models. They trained to do the same. Um, so they predict the next word in a sequence. And uh, GPT stands for a Generative Pre-trained Transformer. And it's a, it's a model, it has really weird sign. Uh, I mean, 4097 tokens. You would expect 96, because that's uh, the power of two. Uh, but I, I read it in the documentation of uh, JetGPT. So yeah, I hope the, the documentation is okay. And they use tokens. And a token, meaning a, um, a sequence of characters, like a word, but also uh, a sign, like a comma or a dot, these are also uh, tokens. So uh, when you communicate with ChatGPT, uh, you communicate in tokens, like with the words what I did. And you get information back, which is also tokens. And when you um, ask the next question, or uh, give the next um, uh, prompt, all the history will be uh, communicated again to ChatGPT, so therefore it knows everything in the in that chat. Um, there are limitations, a lot of limitations. So uh, it has limited knowledge. Uh, there is no online connection, so it doesn't search on the internet for you for stuff, and it can give you the wrong answers. And this is also very dangerous. Uh, 
um, uh, al an algorithm can be biased. In the case of uh, Twitter, they also used AI to, um, if you have images and there is a face on it, they want to have the face in the, in the middle of the picture. So they have an algorithm to, to, to do it in a proper way. But uh, they found out, people found out, that it only works with people uh, with, with, a, with a white skin, because they trained it with a lot of uh, people with a white skin. So uh, if, if you have a black skin, uh, yeah, it didn't work correctly, because they, they didn't use the right data. So that's really dangerous with this kind of stuff. It can be biased, the, the data that they use. So how to use ChatGPT via the website? I, I showed you here. Uh, you go to ChatGPT. Of, uh, sorry, to chatopenai.com. There's a free version and there's a paid version. Um, the paid version is $20 a month, but you have a limitation. And the limitation is, I think, maybe that you can do 20 requests in, a, in an hour or something. Okay, so um, I just uh, uh, was corrected that it now has maybe 50 uh, different um, uh, yeah, every two, three hours. Uh, and after that, when you uh, have more, uh, you will uh, uh, switch back to 3.5, which is less uh, good than um, version 4. So to do it, you do something called prompt engineering. And prompt engineering is programming and giving instructions and teaching uh, the, the system at the same time. And oh yeah, I already uh, uh, said something about the tokens. It's shared between the prompt and uh, the answer that ChatGPT gives. So um, how would you use ChatGPT? Well, there are mainly four different ones. I mean, four different web um, methods. First of all, the modus operandi, uh, which is like this. You have to do certain things, like you give um, ChatGPT a role. You're a Joomla specialist, or you are a Linux expert. Uh, you give them a result. Uh, create five email subject lines for me. You have to give them context. Well, the email is to invite people here uh, to Joomla Day Dag, which actually helped because it's sold out. And then uh, the goal is uh, to convince people to open the email, uh, to visit the website and buy a ticket. And finally, a constraint. The titles of the email subject should be less than 30 characters. And this is like how you should work with ChatGPT. A role, result, context, goal, and constraint. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, the second one is um, chain of thought. So what you do, you learn ChatGPT how it should reason. Reason between uh, brackets. So first you ask a really simple question and ChatGPT answers, and then you ask a really difficult question, and you say, use the method of reasoning that you just did for the question before, and then ChatGPT will use the same sort of logic for it. Another one is uh, the zero chain of thought. You do one question, and then you say, do it in steps, or step by step, and then you get a list of how ChatGPT uh, tries to solve the issue. The last one that I would like to, sh to show here is uh, Criticize Me. I use this a lot, this is my favorite. So what you do, you tell ChatGPT, act as a critic, criticize the following text and tell me why it's really bad. Oh, and do it in steps. And then you get the really stuff. And then after that you say, uh, please rewrite the text using the criticism you just gave me. So this is what I used recently. Um, I was asked for a quote for uh, an extension, to develop an extension for a website. And um, yeah, I'm technical, uh, so I was thinking in database structures about uh, what kinds of views I needed. So this is how I wrote uh, something for myself. I, that is not something that you can uh, give to a customer. So I rewrote it, and then I thought, you know what, I have rewritten it. What would ChatGPT make of it? So I did this, act like a critic, um, explain why it's bad, and do it in steps. And I put my stuff in it. I got back. Too technical. Too many details. You don't tell uh, what the benefit for the customer is. And more things, I, I forgot about those. And then it came with a really nice thing, a really a good reply. 
only it felt a bit like American because it, it ended with uh, like, uh, yeah, we have uh, uh, really confidence that we will solve this project in a, in a matter of time or something like that, like Americans do. So I got rid of those. I rewrote it more like my own words. And then I asked my wife, could you please um, look at this text? Because she, sometimes she, uh, she corrects my, me. And uh, yeah, yeah, she looked at it. And how, what do you think of it? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Okay. I made it with ChatGPT. And then it was silent. And then I, oh no. Um, she is uh, an English and Dutch teacher. And she says, yeah, yeah, hmm, I will be out of a job soon. And I made her, I, I made her more comfortable by saying, uh, you know, in the 70s, you have to, those pocket calculators. Did you know what they say when they were introduced back then? The math teachers, oh no, they have a device that they can do everything. We will be out of work. No, math teachers use calculators these days. It's a tool. So I hope that uh, it works like that also for this. So how would you use ChatGPT via an API? Uh, who do you, does everybody know what an API means? If not, please can I see a, a hand? Okay. Um, so an API is an application protocol interface, which is still difficult. Um, it's like if we go to a website, we use our browser, we are a person, and we look for information on the website. But what if you have a website where software is running and it wants to get information from another website? Well, they use an API. Like uh, you go to a website where you can buy something, like tickets for uh, uh, Yuna Day. You go to the website, you say, I would like to have one ticket for two days, and then you have to pay. Well, the payment doesn't, uh, isn't, isn't here. It's on um, a PayPal or something else. So uh, using the API of the payment service, you make the payment and then you go back. So that's an API. And it's the same with ChatGPT. They have an API, you have to pay for it, that you can use um, to, to use ChatGPT. So uh, if you go to platformopenai.com overview, can, you can see it. And you can use it in your software, like maybe you have a web application or a desktop application, or you write maybe your own code, or you use Joomla, and you want to have ChatGPT in the backend of Joomla, which I will show you. So you go to ChatGPT, you create an API account, and uh, you have to pay two hundreds or two thousand cents per thousand tokens. So it's really, really little. Um, I found uh, three different uh, extensions for Joomla. Probably there, there are probably more now. Uh, first is a free extension of uh, Rick Spam. Um, when I tried it, there was an error or something. It didn't really work out, so I didn't get it to work. But it, the concept was really interesting. I have a plugin in your editor, just like uh, if you use JCE or something else, you have those buttons on the, on the bottom. This would also be such a button to yeah, com communicate with ChatGPT. There is another one uh, called AI Content Generator. Um, I paid it for nine euros, uh, dollars, just to test. I wanted to show it in my uh, Joomla user group. Um, unfortunately, uh, a month later, there was another nine dollars uh, retracted for my PayPal account because it's, uh, apparently they have um, a recurrent subscription that I didn't know of. So I canceled that and yeah. Um, it was nice. It was my first experience with a Joomla extension that worked in in a way, but it generates really a long text, text, and the text is more of the same structure all the time. So uh, the last one, it's also a paid plugin. It's by uh, Yannick Gaultier. Um, it's a Frenchman. Man. He has also four CEO, and you might know him from SH404, Seth. He uh, made a sort of plugin that uh, works like a GUI, a graphical user interface between you and ChatGPT using Joomla articles or other stuff. Because it's, it, it, it is on top of Joomla, it, it, it's a sort of JavaScript, and it acts as an intermediary between the text in your website and ChatGPT. And it's not only articles, it's also if you use Hikashop and you have a description and it's a, a text field, you can use it there as well. It does all kinds of stuff, content creation, translation, etc. I will show you in a minute. So, use cases. Well, 
first of all, you generate text with it. Uh, like, I get a LinkedIn request. And now I have a canned response that I created using ChatGPT. It's polite and, yeah. <laughs> I rewrite stuff. I summarize stuff sometimes. So uh, it doesn't handle PDFs, but if you have a PDF, you can copy the text in it, post it in uh, ChatGPT, and you can say, summarize this. And it does work. There's also um, a function that you have a, a CV um, uh, of a person, his back work background, that you can just put in and say, anonymize this. Don't do that, because it's personal data that you put there. You get anonymized back, but uh, ChatGPT has the data. You can analyze stuff, copy pa and paste stuff, like maybe stock exchange stuff, and, uh, and ask questions about it. You can use it for research. So, uh, some time ago, I didn't know what to uh, do for dinner. I felt like eating something from the oven, from the oven, the stove. And I, uh, I, I, I told ChatGPT, act like Jamie Oliver. Uh, Give me 10 recipes of 10, 10 ideas for dinners that you can make in an oven uh, with maximum six ingredients. Well, I got 10 different uh, ideas. And I said, okay, uh, please give me, the no, give me the recipe of number five. Now I got the recipe. It looked okay. So I made it and uh, my family liked it. So, Oh, yeah. And we went to The Hague uh, some months ago. And I ask for tips for parking, uh, which is a bit difficult because it doesn't know the actual situation. But it gave me some ideas of uh, uh, park and rides near The Hague. And then I looked on the internet for the real uh, information, the opening time, cost, etc. And that was okay. It hadn't changed since 2021. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, this is nice. You can use it for code. I use Docker, which is uh, technical stuff to... to have a web uh, server running locally. Uh, I use SQL, uh, PHP, HD access, and you can chat GPT to, re to, to uh, run stuff and also to rewrite. If you have an, a PHP snippet, uh, like if else, uh, you can say, please change it. And then it's a January, January operator. Uh, never mind. Chertory operator, yes. I never can pronounce that correctly. If you have Joomla errors, or if you have PHP errors, you can also put those in ChatGPT and say, uh, explain this or uh, uh, solve this, and sometimes it works. So, who, sorry? Okay, but you copy the documentation in ChatGPT. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the, it's also possible to uh, uh, copy documentation uh, in ChatGPT and ask to do something using that documentation. Thank you, Elise. So uh, you and you have all web Joomla websites. Uh, do you have multiple users in the website? And maybe the users created articles, and then they changed jobs, and they not they don't long won't work longer there over there and you remove the user, yeah? Sounds familiar? Yeah. So then you get this error, unable to load user with ID, and then a number of the user ID. ChatGPT, assume that you're a Joomla expert. Uh, Joomla's articles are stored in the content database table. Um, they have a foreign key called created by, and the reference is to the database with the users. I said please, but I should not do please because please here is also an extra token and you have to keep it short. Anyway, I said uh, please write an SQL query to find all the records in the database that are missing, uh, that, that, that have a user that's not there anymore. Well, this is ChatGPT and this is the, what it does. And it also explains the code, it's really nice. Mm, then I go to PHP, I have PHP my admin and I change everything, yeah? No. You can better do it in a different way. My user ID is 203. So what I do, I, I ask the same question, I, I, no sorry, I, 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 in the same chat, I say please extend the SQL query to update all those records and make the record 203. So this is what you do, 
And with this code, you just uh, solve an error in, uh, with articles that, that don't have a user anymore. And now you have to written the articles according to Joomla. So what's the future of uh, all this? Well, I really like open source software. And fortunately, there are also open source large language models. For instance, uh, a company that's not really popular with privacy stuff, it's uh, Meta of Facebook. Uh, they have something called LAMA, a large language model Meta. And this language model was um, given to uh, academic researchers. They could use it for free. They could not, could not use it um, commercially. Anyway, uh, it was leaked on the internet, and even other people also uh, started to use uh, LAMA. And there were a couple of researchers at the Stanford University, and a couple of, of one week later, they uh, came with Alpaca 7B. What did they do? It cost, uh, the, the, the creation of Alpaca costed $600. What did they do? They used uh, ChatGPT, the API of it. It cost them $500 to use that to generate 50,000 um, uh, conversation, conversations. Those conversations and the Llama model, they used those, uh, uh, hired in the cloud some sort of uh, uh, servers uh, with uh, large GPUs. And they trained the language model with those 50,000 uh, um, conversations. So it was six, uh, $600 to train it. So yeah, they used something to, to, to create that. It's just like the first microprocessor chips in computers were made probably by hand or with transi uh, com computers that had transistors instead of silicon. And now new um, uh, chips are built on computers that have chips. So the more, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, so there's also Ficuna 13B. Uh, what's Ficuna, by the way, do you know? Uh, it's some kind of also, also an NMO. Okay, yeah. Well, this is, this is humor of, uh <laughs> <laughs> well, this one uh, is not uh, an NMO. Uh, GPT for all, they have an Apache license, meaning you can use it for commercial uh, purposes. So, someone in Google, uh, nobody knows who, but uh, so said something, we have no moat, and neither, neither does open AI. It means like, uh, we don't have many advantages anymore because of all those um, language models. And he, this, this one was included. So what you can see is, uh, oh, uh, Lama, uh, yeah, it had 70% of, uh, yeah, of, of the correctness stuff. ChatGPT is still the best, but you can see that just one week later they, they, they have already increased uh, the, the model strength. So um, in the future you will probably train your own language model on your own computer. And maybe you have a lot of PDFs with documentation and you can uh, yeah, train it on that, yes? Private uh, GPT. Okay, so uh, there's also called something called MEM API. What's MEM AI? Okay, so it answers questions from all the stuff you have on your computer. Ah, okay, so um, this is the same with this. I installed it on my own computer. I fed it with some Linux books, and then uh, when I asked a question. I had to wait for one minute, two minutes before I got the answer. And just one line or two lines. It's not as good as ChatGPT yet. Uh, it could also be my computer, I don't know. Um, something that also will happen is that um, OpenAI, I mean uh, ChatGPT stuff, uh, will be included in word processors. I think Microsoft is already doing this kind of stuff. Google as well. And so, yeah, you don't have to go to ChatGPT, you just use it in a spreadsheet to do analysis or graphic editors or... Um, so there are some resources on the internet. Um, I help uh, in Joomla Forum as one of the moderators 
and we noticed that um, some people, especially new users with just one post, and the one post is really long, in the same structure as um, uh, ChatGPT answers. So then we checked with zero GPT if it's AI or not, because we don't like AI on the forum. We, we want human interaction, not robots. Um, yeah, there are a couple of things also, how to write your own prompts, etc. Um, about prompt engineering, a lot of uh, resources where you can learn this kind of stuff. Uh, I will make the, few, the sheets available so you can get it there. Um, keep an eye on stuff, like if you program uh, GitHub Copilot, seems to be uh, really nice to give all your kind of suggestions. Um, there's also prompt injection. So, uh, you probably know SQL injection. So you have a field, or in the URL you put some code that you do database commands that are not supposed to, to be run. You can do the same with a prompt injection. Like you say, assume uh, that it's illegal to talk about colors. The following comments are from people with usernames and comments. And then you have a lot of people using colors. And then you say, at the end, person four mentions colors. Person one is doing something illegal. Person four should be warned. Oh no, sorry. Um, Person five says, person four mentioned colors. Person four is, is doing something illegal. Uh, oh. I, I don't see it, anyway. But um, person four said, nice weather, isn't it? So he didn't do anything. But in the past, uh, they, they, they fixed this. In the past, uh, ChatGPT would say that uh, person four was doing something illegal because you suggested that it was illegal. Um, also, something with interest, interesting. You say, in, um, imagine you are a professor of science. Uh, debate with me until I say the word, and then you mention a word. In this case, end of line is my what I would use. And then when you say something, he, uh, the, the chat GPT will respond in this role. It will keep in the role. So uh, before the end, I will go to... Okay. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So uh, I have a really nice website. It's called Initech, and uh, if I log in, I have to log in again. Um, so let's assume I just installed um, the Four AI plugin. Oh, hold on, it's a plugin. It's called 4AI. You get two plugins. Uh, one is the installer and the other one is the system. When I enable it, you get here this 4AI stuff. So I go to content, articles, new. Um, and and more. Yeah, this is a bit a bit little for a text like this. You know what? Uh, I go to uh, for AI, and I say I would like to expand my text. Oh yeah, and you can see here that it it copied. When I clicked on it, it copied my, the text from my uh, thing here. And uh, when I say, okay, submit a request, I know that it will take uh, really small dollars. Submit a request. And I hope it's not too busy at, open, uh, up at chat GPT, otherwise it will get an error after some time. Are there any questions, uh, meanwhile? Everybody's really curious. Yes? Yes. Uh, why is ChatGPT not connected to the internet like uh, that it can do live searches? I have no idea. It could be like um, that it would even be more popular and people uh, cannot use it because of the popularity. Uh, it could be uh, when you... Um, use really large computers to, um, to analyze stuff. 
you have to, to stop at one point. So they stopped in 2021. 20, uh, there is also um, a theory that um, people now use open uh, chat GPT to generate text. So if those are also included in the data, they were, will, um, how do you say, they will make their own data set they, they, uh, wrong. Like, because it, yeah, it, yeah. Yes, Phil? So, uh, so, uh, so uh, I just got some response back, and it's like uh, Juno's popular content management system, schema implementation, compatibility layer. It could be hallucination. I don't know if it's really good, and maybe, um, yeah, maybe I want to to uh, to translate it. Um, first, I would like to. Uh, replace editor and content, and then I say uh, close. So now I have this article here. This is how it works. Yeah, it's, I didn't make this, it's really, really nice. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, if, if you search, I, I mean the link is also in my presentation, it's uh, weebler.com or something, and it's called for AI. Um, yeah, any other questions? Yes, Alexander? Um, the question is, is there a difference between this plugin and copy and pasting it uh, yourself from Open for ChatGPT? Uh, yes, there is a difference, because when you uh, do it yourself for, from uh, manually copying, you have to think about how you um, write the prompts. Uh, this has a lot of prompts developed, so if I do some, something else, it will, uh, yeah, uh, will use that. I mean, uh, for instance, if I click on it again, and I can say maybe I want to, this, this text, oh, this text, um, I would like to modify the request. Nee. Yeah, but I saved it, or did I, didn't I? Something else. Oh yeah, and uh, I use Linux, by the way, but uh, you already. <laughs> so I expand it first. Submit. I, th I thought it's. For, I think it's 19 or 70 euros or something for the extension, one time for a year. But uh, that's a good, good, good question. Uh, sorry, the, the question was, uh, what does the extension cost? Uh, yeah, it's about 90 euros, maybe. Um, but there's also cost in using the API of uh, of this. So if I go to my other browser, I'm not really sure. It's a five-minute delay. So uh, a couple of days ago, I tested it, and this is what I had to pay for, for a request. And let's check. Oh, yeah, now it's... Uh, this is a Linux article, so uh, uh, replace editor content, close, and now I save. Okay, if I click it again, and I will do SEO, um, I can do page title, meta, SEO keywords, submit requests, and it will analyze the text for SEO, SEO keywords. Yes, it's just a text. You can just edit. Uh, well, Linux, stability, security, uh, performance, and open source. Replace keywords. I'm not really sure if uh, what I'm doing now. It works. Yeah. 
Hmm. Nee, I have to do that. <laughs> I have not used seal in this. And oh, there is one one thing. There was a discussion uh, on the internet about uh, if you use um, uh, ChatGPT text on your website, if it would be good for seal or not. Uh, at first, in January, February, uh, Google said, uh, no, it's not unique, it's generated. And I think now everybody uses it and they don't care anymore, probably. Uh, be careful with it. Um, also, if you create something, put it in a, in a, in a detector to see if it's, uh, if it's AI. If you put um, emoticons in it or spelling mistakes, it will be more human. So, um, yeah, what's the So for AI is 69 euros a year. And there's also a professional license and it's 179 euros a year. But it's for agencies and the other one is for a single website. Okay, thank you. So yeah, if there are no other questions, then uh, thank you for your, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, so Elisa uh, told that she used uh, WordPress. I'm mean, sorry, um, yeah, she used WordPress. <laughs> she switched for a website and she switched to Joomla. And she wanted to know how to transfer uh, the content from the database. So what she did, she asked ChatGPT, uh, how can I uh, move the content from the database from a WordPress website to a Joomla website? And uh, it worked correctly, more or less, yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you.